All right, guys, welcome to part three, and this is the part where we talk about the software that I use and some software that you can get for free um, for stop motion animation. So, first of all, the, the software you can get for free is called Ananazi Stop Motion, and I'll give a link to that so you can see it right there. This software does everything you need for um, stop motion, so pretty cool right there. I'll leave a link to that in case you want to download it. Also, the camera, um, you can get uh, one of these cameras, like the ones you use for chatting uh, on the internet. And this camera will do just the same uh, as any other camera. Or if you want to go the expensive route, you can get one of those really uh, high-end cameras for your stop motion, like right here. So this website is uh, part of uh, Dragon Frame. And they tell you everything you need for um, Dragon Frame. So the the only difference between these cameras is that you can operate them con uh, remote control through the software. That's it. But you don't really need that. It's just uh, you know you can take pictures with the um, HD camera for you know regular chatting like this one, and um, you you should be you know pretty okay with that. So. I think you could get this for like 60 bucks or something on, on eBay. So, um, you know, don't worry. You don't need to get a high-end camera. Um, I I I have a, a T2, so that's what I use, and um, you know, that's what I'm using now. So, um, just rushing through the video because my my cams, <laughs> is it, it, the battery's low. So let's see. All right, so let's let's go to Dragon Frame and see how we can do just a short little animation, really rough, and render it out. Um, and you know, and then uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll do the other video of how to do the key lighting and stuff. So all right, so that's the icon for Dragon Frame. I'm clicking on it, and I'm gonna open up a Spidey scene that I saved. Spidey 4, open scene, open take. So right away, uh, the software talks to the camera through this little um, cord, it's a USB cord, that you connect to your um, PC. I use a laptop, as you can see. Now, when you buy the software, they don't send you a disk. What happens is you buy the software and it sends you this little box right here, Dragon Frame. And um, basically, this box is just a remote control. Well, it's kind of like a remote control, it has a cord and also a USB that you connect to your laptop. And these are the controls you use for day, the pal. animation. See? It's Dragon Frame. So, all of the controls. And they give you instructions of what all the controls are. So, let's say I want to take a picture, I press this button and it will take a picture of the spider-man so check it out you see so that's one picture um, if you want to see the history of pictures you just scroll down here and um, there are the pictures right there so you can do whatever you want to the pictures you know and take another picture and stuff so it's pretty cool now you see this little thing here this thing is a uh, it's sort of like uh, it leaves the frames before so like if you move the spider-man a little bit you see how there's a there's like a ghost well it's like that's what you use for the animation so you'll know where the spider-man was before you moved it so let's say it's like say for instance you you move your, ca your character out of place you'll know exactly where he was before so that's how you can do um, good good on um, animation because you have this um, function and I know for a fact that Anana Ananazi has this function so don't worry about it so you're set alright so let's just try to do a little bit of animation right and um, and then just render out the clip okay so let's see it's kinda hard to animate with one one hand Um, and um, as you can see here, this is the rig. You can barely see it. And when once you you import this clip, when, once we finish the animation, we'll render it into a QuickTime file. 
and then after that you take that QuickTime file and you 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 um, put it in After Effects and there you take out all the green and it'll look like he's you know you know alone there's nothing behind him nothing so that's how you do key lighting and um just doing here a little more just a more a few more frames so <clears throat> basically you control the software through here or you can do it manually uh, on the uh, interface um, this program it's like really cool for stop motion It's solely for stop motion so it's got a lot of functions but um, if you guys want me to cover more of the functions uh, let me know because um, right now I'm just trying to show the uh, the part about the animation and you know and pumping out a little animation clip so you can use it for uh, compositing you know any background so that's why I'm, I'm rushing through it also um, so there you go also uh, I, I recommend if you can to get a camera like this a Canon I, this is a Canon that I got and it's the T2 I it's pretty good um, it's got like a lot of megapixels and the good thing about these cameras is that you can use them to make videos like for YouTube like for anything you know you can make uh, videos you can make and you can use it for stop motion so it's pretty awesome plus you can buy lenses in the future you know and you can buy like you know really cool lenses like macro lenses or or uh, wide-eyed lenses whatever you call lenses you know so it's it's in a you know sort of like investing you know so uh, that's why I got it because I just want to get a really nice camera but doesn't mean that you can't do everything I'm doing with the other camera that I showed you you can do everything that I'm doing right now with that other camera which will cost you like 60 bucks so don't worry about it you know um, also it's good to have um, green clay handy for you know in case you want to stand your character on a something and you can't or um, uh, tack it's, it's good stuff to have for animation just in case you need it when you, while you're animating your character um, also uh, I got two lights here one here the other one there and the third one up here like you saw plus my ceiling light so these lights are good enough for now but they're not ideal lights to use for animation and um, I don't want to get into that, but it, so far I can do animation like this and not have any kind of problems. Um, but if I want to do like a real, like uh, high definition um, animation, I need to get like uh, LED lights because LED lights uh, don't have power fluctuations, so you won't get any like uh, you know difference in shots. You know, you'll get like flickering. That's a problem in, in stop motion so um you know but right now this is good enough for me you know and these lights cost like 20 no they cost like 13 dollars at the hardware store so you know you can just and i cover i cover the light with this piece of paper just to diffuse the light a little so it won't hurt my eyes also while i'm shooting you know because the setup is like you see it right here the setup the rig the puppet the camera the cord and the pc so that's based in a nutshell that's everything right here so let's keep um doing the frames you know like i said it's really rough but i'm just doing it to show um how the process is so now look at the history line uh, one other thing I want to say that it, if you want to change something, like let's say in frame um, 8 or frame 5, you don't like how it looks, you can always uh, just, you know, delete it. And uh, with the um, the ghosting, like I like to call, call this function, um, you can go back, position the figure to the position you, you want, like, 
and take another picture and you can put it in that part of the timeline so um it's great it's not like before when uh animators used to work with like uh traditional hardware like a uh, film and stuff where you know you mess up one frame and that's it you got to start all over again now it's not like that now you can re go back in time and do a frame you can you know you can do a lot of stuff now with, with computers uh, they, they've actually made stop motion more um, versatile you know it's not like you know you're doing a 500 sh shot and you know on the 400 shot you mess up and you you have to start all over again it's not like that so um, just wanted to mention that too um, <clears throat> so let's see let's keep doing this okay all right so my battery's gonna run out soon, so let's let's render this shot. So let's take the cursor, go to file, file, export to QuickTime. So you can see there, export to QuickTime. It's gonna ask me uh, here, export to QuickTime. I'm gonna put it as a video low, low resolution right now because. Like I said, I'm not doing high resolution right now, so low resolution. Um, here are all the you know controls. All you have to do is click export, you know, and that's it. So now it's rendering the shot. Oh, I forgot to do something, which is you know you can play the shot and play it over again and you know see how the animation looks. So, uh, let's see, should have done that. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you right now. You can press play here. See, he moves, looks really rough, but you get the idea, right? And you can move it slow, backwards, forward. You can stop just by the controls here, you know, backwards, forward backwards forward you see so pretty cool play play you put it on um, looping so it just loops all the time okay so I don't like the first frame because it's got a really big difference in lighting you see that so I'm gonna delete the first frame that actually might cause problems in the um, in the uh, final final video. So, okay. See you later. You see you now. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, it's gonna be rough. So now let's render it. And export to QuickTime and low resolution and export you can change the frame rate to to 15 frames per second 10 frames per second anything you want so and i'm doing right now 29 frames export so it's gonna it's gonna make a little quick time um movie say okay Right there, you see it rendering. It finished already. So now we can go back, go to where it saved my documents. Oh, there it is, actually. It pumped it out for me right away. I have to go look for it. So there is the shot. So you can see everything around him is green, right? Everything's green, including the rig. And um, it's a QuickTime file, so if you press um, play, it should play. Right there, he moves. See? So now the next step is to take this little clip and erase the green, right? And then put any kind of background, a picture, a video, and it'll look like he's in that in that environment. And that's how they. That's why um, I use all this. I use the rig and a green screen and a second rig because you can take your character and put it in any environment you want um, 
other people, other animators have a lot of resources so they can build sets and they can build puppets but that that, that amount of resources for, for an amateur uh, artist like me is too expensive so you know plus the time it takes to build a set let's say you do a movie and it's a two or three sets you know I mean you know and then building the puppets and and the armatures inside the puppets you know that takes a lot of money and, and time so another another factor is time so the way I do it it you you basically cut around those corners and all you deal with is just animating and compositing the background from any kind of video that you get you know so that's that's the way I do stop motion um, and um, this is the end of the video guys so on the next video we'll do uh, After Effects, we'll do the key light, erase the green and put a, a different background and we'll have a finished fi finish product, we'll render that video and have a little clip of Spider-Man you know flying flying through the sky uh, of Manhattan you know and um, it should look real so you guys have any questions about the software or the, ca the camera I'll put up the links and yeah, just let me know what you, what you guys think. And um, this is Kairos, and see you later.